Young bullies target elderly man. What followed was beyond belief. It was a peaceful afternoon in the quiet town of Brooksville. The sun shone brightly over the town square, where the weekly farmer's market was in full swing. Stalls filled with fresh produce, homemade goods, and local crafts lined the cobblestone streets. Families and friends strolled leisurely, enjoying the warm, friendly atmosphere. Among the crowd was Benjamin Ben Bryant, an 80-year-old retired librarian known for his gentle nature and love for books. Every Wednesday, Ben made his way to the market, enjoying the bustle of activity and the opportunity to chat with friends and acquaintances. Today, he was particularly excited as he had found a rare, antique book at one of the stalls, a treasure for his modest collection. Ben sat down on a bench near the fountain in the center of the square, carefully examining his new find. He was so engrossed in the book that he didn't notice the group of teenagers approaching. Led by a tall, brash boy named Peyton, the group had a reputation for causing trouble around town. Hey, check out the old man with his nose in a book, Peyton said loudly, nudging his friends and pointing at Ben. What a nerd. The other teens laughed, their eyes gleaming with mischief. Ben looked up, startled by the sudden intrusion. He tried to ignore them, hoping they would move on, but Peyton and his friends had other plans. Hey, Grandpa, Peyton taunted, snatching the book from Ben's hands. Why don't you get a Kindle or something? Nobody reads these old things anymore. Ben's heart sank as he watched Peyton toss the book carelessly to one of his friends. Please give it back, he said softly, his voice trembling. That book is very important to me. The teenagers ignored his plea, tossing the book back and forth like a toy. Ben stood up, reaching out in a desperate attempt to retrieve it, but the boys were too quick. Peyton smirked, holding the book out of Ben's reach. Come on, old man, catch, he jeered, throwing the book high into the air. It landed with a sickening thud in the fountain, the pages instantly soaking up the water. Ben gasped, tears welling up in his eyes as he watched his precious book ruin before his eyes. The teenagers laughed, oblivious to the pain they had caused. Just as the situation seemed unbearable, a voice rang out from the crowd. Hey, what do you think you're doing? The voice belonged to a young woman named Reagan, who had been shopping at the market with her young son Carter. She pushed through the crowd, her eyes blazing with anger as she approached the group of teens. How dare you treat him like that? Reagan demanded, her voice firm and unwavering. Apologize now. Peyton turned to face her, his smirk faltering under the intensity of her gaze. Mind your own business, lady, he muttered, but there was a hint of uncertainty in his voice. This is my business, Regan shot back. You have no right to harass him. Apologize and leave, or I'm calling the police. The other patrons in the market had been watching the exchange, their expressions ranging from disapproval to disgust. Encouraged by Regan's bravery, they began to murmur their agreement. Peyton's friends, sensing the shift in the atmosphere, exchanged uneasy glances. Reluctantly, Python mumbled an apology and motioned for his friends to follow him. The teenagers quickly left the scene, casting resentful glances over their shoulders. Regan turned to Ben, her expression softening. Are you all right, sir? She asked gently. Ben nodded, though his hands were still shaking. Yes, thank you, he said quietly. I don't know what I would have done if you hadn't stepped in. Regan smiled. I'm Regan, and this is my son Carter. May we join you? Ben's face brightened at the offer. Of course, I'd be honored. As Reagan and Carter sat down with Ben, the crowd slowly dispersed, and the market resumed its normal activity. Reagan introduced herself and her son, and Ben shared a bit about his life. They talked about his time as a librarian, his late wife, and his love for books. Reagan listened intently, her respect for Ben growing with each story. She was a single mother, working as a teacher at the local elementary school, and she admired Ben's dedication to education and knowledge. Carter, a bright and curious eight-year-old, was fascinated by Ben's tales of adventure and history. As they chatted, the other market-goers began to take notice of the new friendship forming. Many of them approached Ben to express their support and gratitude for his presence in the community. Ben, who had always been a bit of a loner since his wife's passing, felt a warmth and connection he hadn't experienced in years. Later that evening, after returning home, Ben found an envelope in his mailbox. It was unmarked and had no return address, but the handwriting was neat and unfamiliar. Curious, 
He opened it and found a single sheet of paper inside. The message was brief but intriguing. Ben's brow furrowed as he read the note. He couldn't think of anyone who would send such a message, and the mysterious tone left him both intrigued and cautious. Unsure of what to expect, he decided to call Reagan and share the letter with her. Reagan arrived at Ben's house later that evening, her curiosity piqued. This is strange, she said, examining the letter. Do you have any idea who might have sent it? Ben shook his head. None, but it sounds important, and I feel like I should go. Reagan nodded thoughtfully. I'll go with you. We'll meet this friend together. The next day, Ben and Reagan made their way to the old bookstore on Main Street. The bookstore, a charming old building filled with dusty tomes and hidden treasures, had been a favorite spot for Ben and his late wife. They had spent countless hours browsing the shelves, finding joy in the written word. As they entered the bookstore, the bell above the door chimed softly, and the familiar smell of old books enveloped them. They made their way to the back of the store, where a figure was waiting. It was an elderly woman with a kind face and bright, intelligent eyes. Mr. Bryant, the woman asked, her voice warm and gentle. Ben nodded, yes, that's me, and this is my friend, Reagan. The woman smiled, a look of relief crossing her face. I'm so glad you came. My name is Addison. I'm the owner of this bookstore, and I've been researching the history of Brooksville for many years. There's something I discovered that I think you need to know. Ben and Reagan exchanged curious glances before taking a seat at the table. What is it, Addison? Ben asked gently. Addison took a deep breath and began to explain. While researching the town's history, I came across some old records and letters that mentioned your family, Mr. Bryant. Specifically, your grandfather, Gabriel Bryant. I found references to a hidden document that he had written during his time as a local historian. It was a personal journal, but it was lost after his death. Ben's heart skipped a beat. My grandfather's journal? I had no idea he kept one. Addison nodded. I believe it contains important information about his experiences and thoughts during his lifetime. It might even have been meant for you. Ben's eyes filled with tears. Do you know where it is? Addison smiled softly. I believe it's hidden in the attic of your old family home. The records I found indicated that Gabriel left it there for safekeeping. Determined to uncover the mystery of his grandfather's journal, Ben and Reagan, accompanied by Addison, made their way to Ben's old family home. The house had been vacant for years, but it still held a special place in Ben's heart. Memories of his childhood and his family flooded back as they approached the front door. The attic was dusty and filled with old boxes and forgotten treasures. The three of them carefully searched through the clutter, guided by Addison's research. After what felt like hours, Regan's hand brushed against a small wooden box tucked away in a corner. Then, I think I found something, she called out, carefully pulling the box from its hiding place. Ben's hands trembled as he opened the box, revealing an old, leather-bound journal. The cover was worn, and the pages were yellowed with age. Tears streamed down his face as he recognized his grandfather's handwriting on the first page. Back at Ben's house, the three of them sat around the kitchen table, the journal placed reverently in front of them. With a deep breath, Ben opened it and began to read. The journal was a deeply personal account of Gabriel Bryant's life, filled with his thoughts, experiences, and reflections. He wrote about the challenges he faced, the friendships he formed, and the love he felt for his family. Each entry was a testament to his resilience, courage, and unwavering dedication to preserving the history of Brooksville. One entry in particular stood out. It was dated December 12, 1945, the day Gabriel had returned from the war. He described the harrowing events he had witnessed, the fear and determination that drove him forward, and the promise he made to himself to protect and preserve the town's history for future generations. Ben's tears flowed freely as he read his grandfather's words, his heart filled with a mixture of sorrow and gratitude. Thank you, grandfather, he whispered. I will always cherish this. Word of the discovery spread quickly through Brooksville, and soon the entire town was buzzing with excitement and admiration. The story of Ben, Reagan, and the journal became a symbol of hope, love, and resilience, touching the hearts of everyone who heard it. Harper, the owner of Harper's Diner, decided to host a special event at the diner to celebrate the discovery and honor Ben's contributions to the community. She invited everyone in town, 
turning the diner into a place of celebration and gratitude. The evening of the event, the diner was filled with people of all ages, each eager to express their appreciation for Ben and to hear more about the remarkable story. Ben, accompanied by Reagan, stood before the crowd, his heart full of gratitude and love. As the crowd quieted, Ben took a deep breath and began to speak. Thank you all for being here tonight, he said, his voice steady but emotional. I am overwhelmed by the kindness and support you've shown me. I never expected that a simple visit to the market would lead to such an incredible journey. He paused, looking at the faces of his friends, neighbors, and fellow townspeople. My grandfather was a remarkable man. He was brave, kind, and full of love. Finding his journal has brought me closer to him, even after all these years. It's a reminder of the strength and resilience we all have within us. Ben held up the journal. This journal is more than just a collection of memories. It's a testament to the power of love, hope, and the human spirit. It reminds us that even in the darkest times, there is always a light to guide us, and that the connections we make with each other can last a lifetime. The crowd erupted in applause, and Ben felt a sense of fulfillment he hadn't experienced in years. As he stepped down from the podium, Reagan approached him, tears in her eyes. Mr. Bryant, I wanted to thank you for everything you've done, Reagan said, her voice filled with emotion. Your story has inspired all of us, and we want to do something special for you. Before Ben could respond, Harper stepped forward, holding a large envelope. Ben, we all pitched in to do something for you. Open it. Ben took the envelope, his hands shaking with anticipation. He opened it to find a set of plane tickets and a letter of reservation for a trip to London, England, a trip he had always dreamed of taking but had never been able to afford. We know how much you've wanted to visit London, Harper said, her voice choking with emotion. This is our way of saying thank you for all the love and wisdom you've given us. Ben was speechless. Tears streamed down his face as he looked at the tickets, overwhelmed by the generosity and kindness of his friends and neighbors. Thank you, he whispered, his voice breaking. Thank you all so much. With Reagan's help, Ben prepared for his trip to London. It was a dream come true, a final adventure to honor the memory of his grandfather and all the soldiers who had fought and died there. The entire town rallied behind him, offering support and well wishes for his journey. When the day of the trip arrived, Ben felt a mix of excitement and nostalgia. As he boarded the plane, he couldn't help but think of his grandfather and how much he would have loved this adventure. He carried the journal with him, a reminder of the bond they had shared. London was everything Ben had imagined and more. He visited the historic sites, walked along the Thames, and paid his respects at the war memorials. Each moment was a tribute to his grandfather and the countless others who had made the ultimate sacrifice. Reagan, who had accompanied Ben on the trip, documented their journey, capturing the joy and reverence of each experience. The bond between them grew stronger, a testament to the enduring power of friendship and shared experiences. When Ben returned to Brooksville, he was greeted with a hero's welcome. The trip had rejuvenated his spirit, and he felt a renewed sense of purpose and fulfillment. He continued to share his story, inspiring others with the lessons he had learned and the memories he had cherished. The journal and its contents were displayed at the Brooksville Historical Society, a lasting tribute to Gabriel Bryant and the impact he had on those around him. Ben's story became a part of the town's legacy, a reminder of the power of love, resilience, and the connections that bind us together. Ben spent his remaining years surrounded by the love and support of his community. He continued to visit the market, sharing stories and wisdom with friends old and new. And every year, on the anniversary of the discovery of the journal, the town held a special event to honor Ben and the enduring legacy of his grandfather. The story of Benjamin Bryant, the elderly man targeted by young bullies and the heartwarming events that followed, became a legend in Brooksville. It was a story of courage, redemption, and the unbreakable bonds that connect us all. The journal, now a cherished artifact at the Brooksville Historical Society, continued to inspire generations with its message of hope and resilience. Visitors from near and far came to see it, drawn by the story of a man whose love and wisdom had made a lasting impact on his community. And in the quiet moments, when the sunset and the world was bathed in a golden glow, one could almost hear the soft, joyous laughter of Ben and Gabriel, their love and legacy forever etched in the heart of those who believed in the enduring power of kindness 
and the connections that bind us together, 